Hello everyone, this is Alex of Coyote Star Astrology and welcome back to my channel. This is my video for the full moon in Libra coming in tomorrow, which will be April 16th, 2022, a Saturday here on California time. However, as always, make sure to change the time for your current location as that time and date may change for you. And wow, this is a potent full moon. It's bringing up a lot. I don't know if you guys can feel it. I have definitely been feeling it. And I can't wait to dive into this chart with you. I just have a real quick announcement. I'm putting the information up there on the screen. I am re-offering my natal chart 101 class that I did just a few weeks back. It was a great course. We had a lot of people in the room but I am re-offering it on a weekend night for those of you that couldn't make the weekday or week evening live call. So yeah, this is a beginner's course. It's for those of you that understand your signs. So you understand Aries through Pisces, but your own natal chart is still a bit of a mystery. So we break down the natal chart by houses, aspects. We go through the planets, Sun through Pluto. I also added the nodes and Chiron. And we do a live Q&A at the end. So this will be on Saturday the 23rd. And if you're interested in reserving a spot, you can email me there up on the screen at coyotestarastrology at gmail.com. All right. I look forward to seeing some of you there. Let's dive into this absolutely insane full moon in Libra. Now, this full moon is bringing up a lot of energy that has been simmering over the last few weeks, which have been very intense because we've been going through that Saturn square the nodes aspect that we've been talking so much about. This full moon is kind of a climax for a lot of those themes. And of course, being that it's a full moon in Libra, relationships and the processes that are going sort of like simmering under the surface of relationships is being brought sharply into focus for us to do some pretty deep transformative work. Now, there's a few reasons why I say this. So let's break this down. So here's our moon at 26 degrees Libra in opposition to the sun at 26 degrees Aries. This is our full moon here. Now you can see that there is this very tense T-square with Lord Pluto at 28 degrees Capricorn. So a T-square is a tense conversation. In other words, our full moon in Libra that so desperately wants peace and harmony within relationships is undergoing a transformative and intense process with Pluto. Pluto, of course, is going to bring it all up. Pluto wants to purge. It wants secrets revealed. And Pluto essentially insinuates that there's a transformation happening that is kind of stressful in a way. It's definitely asking us to step up and to grow. And let's explore further to understand what themes might be coming up in relationships. So first thing we really want to understand is that because the moon in Libra is being squared by Pluto, this is going to bring up the shadow of Libra or the underbelly of Libra, which I know I've mentioned this in a video before, but it's worth mentioning again. A lot of people don't know about the shadow of Libra. And this makes sense because Libra is all about harmony and balance and peace in our relationships and kind of like playing nice and putting on a, a good face so that our relationships function smoothly. So the darker underbelly of Libra isn't often talked about. In fact, you know, I'm sure you guys have experienced this. If someone says they're a Libra, everyone in the room is kind of like, oh, Libra, how nice. I love Libra. Such good people. And they are. There's good intentions there. But when, when we look at the shadow of Libra, of course, Libra has just as much of a shadow as every other archetype, equal parts, light and dark, high frequency, low frequency. When we look at the plight of Libra, we understand what the shadow is because Libra is about peace and harmony. 
Libra can forego their own desires to make others happy. They can lack boundaries with others. They can lose sight of what they want because they're so focused on doing things for other people. Or they're so afraid of creating waves in a situation that they have a difficult time speaking their truth, being fully transparent or authentic. Um, and, you know, we all want peace and harmony in our relationships, but we also need to honor our authenticity and our authentic desire. We also have to stand up for who we are. And sometimes this creates stressful situations in relationships. That's why. Libra and Aries are in natural polarity. Aries is what I want. Libra is what my partner wants, my friends want. Um, and there's a natural polarity here, which tells us that what we need to do isn't always going to be in harmony with, with what others want or what others are doing. So Pluto might be bringing up some of those themes for you. This can be playing itself out in conversation or energetic dynamics within your relationships at this time. And what makes it even more intense is that the south node in Scorpio, which has been getting a beating from Saturn over the last few weeks, the south node in Scorpio is ruled by Pluto. So the ruler of the south node, all of this secretive shadow stuff from that south node in Scorpio, we've been talking about this, secrets, manipulations, jealousy, codependence, addictive, self-sabotaging, self-defeating behaviors, destroyer energies. The planet that rules all that is what's putting stress on this full moon. Now, the north node in Taurus, ruled by Venus, Venus is over here in Pisces, where we have a lot of Pisces energy happening right now. So the veils are very thin. There's a lot of, not to use a watered down new age word, there's a lot of spiritual evolution happening right now. Consciousness is elevating. We're kind of dreaming into this new uh, stage in our spiritual evolution. But there's also a lot happening on the 3D that's asking us to make very difficult choices. And I've had lots of DMs from people wanting me to address the Jupiter-Neptune conjunction, so I will really quickly. Um, this is a powerful focal point in the chart, Jupiter and Neptune in Pisces. This is opening us up spiritually Sure, yes, and I've been feeling that there's definitely a dreamlike, idealistic quality that's coming through the field. However, Saturn squaring the nodes over the last couple weeks has made what's actually happening on the 3D very difficult, and it's putting us all at this crossroads point of needing to make very difficult, real life, mature decisions. And I feel like that energy is sort of taking priority and it's taking up a lot of space in our consciousness as well. So you guys know me, I don't bullshit. Like, yeah, Jupiter-Neptune conjunction, it's bringing in a lot of spiritual energy. However, we also live in the third dimension. There's choices that need to be made and these choices right now are not easy for a lot of people because of this square to the south node. This is forcing everyone to look at things that they are afraid of, that they don't really want to look at. There's a confrontation with the experience of loss because in order to transmute that south node in Scorpio, we have to transform, which means letting go of the way things have been. We can't get to the north node without doing that work first. And we're in this headlock right now. We're in this square where Saturn is going, what are you going to do? I know you want to evolve, but it's scary because in order to evolve, you have to confront the shadow. You have to confront your fears and some less than savory aspects of the self. South Node Scorpio is the part of us that we all want to hide, lock in a closet, never let anyone see. It's very tender. It's very raw. It's vulnerable. And I know I've said this before too, but a lot of people are walking around with this all lock locked up within them. 
afraid to even expose it other than to very, very, very trusted sources, maybe even just like a diary or something. It's just like, oh my God, we're all on this freaking ride right now. It's, it's insane. But that North Node in Taurus is calling us. And the North Node in Taurus wants vulnerability, wants honesty, wants stability, wants to disentangle us from the toxicity of the South Node in Scorpio. So you're doing good. For those of you out there that are like, oh my God, this is fucking intense. Like it's all part of it. It needs to come up for this process to unfold. And on that note, it's gonna get even more wild. But I feel like in a good way because we have Uranus now within 10 degrees coming up to the North Node very quickly. The two will make their exact conjunction beginning of August, end of July. So Every day we are getting closer to that conjunction, which means every day Uranus is getting closer and closer and closer to the North Node, which is going to help us move a lot of this energy. And I've been talking about this on my Instagram. I'll put that up on the screen now for those of you that don't follow me yet. We've been talking about this, and I've been telling people no, and I can say this for certain because this is gonna be hitting everyone's chart in a specific area that's unique to you. Know for certain that you do not have all the pieces of the puzzle yet. Saturn squaring the nodes is making you feel like you do, and you know, you've got these difficult choices and these difficult situations and this intensity building, but Uranus hasn't hit that north node yet, and Uranus is unexpected events, new perspective, revolution, quantum leaps, and radical experimental change. Very different from Saturn. Saturn is like, oh my God, I only have two choices. I feel limited. I feel stuck. I feel trapped. This is intense. Uranus is going to come blow that all to smithereens and be like, grab my hand. We're going to break free of all this crap. And that energy is going to continue throughout the rest of the year. All the way through to January, Uranus will be with that North Node. So it's going to be quantum leap after quantum leap after unexpected uh, opportunity after unexpected perspective that's going to allow us to just jump, jump, jump over these hurdles. Yes, by proxy, Uranus will be activating the South Node in Scorpio, so we're still going to be doing this deep work, but Uranus will be favoring the North Node, moving mountains, and helping us through our own elevated awareness make choices that may feel impossible now. That being said, I know y'all can feel him coming. We all feel him coming, and Uranus at the North Node is going to require us to, like I said, make radical shifts, meaning this is new territory. This isn't the traditional way. This isn't the way that we were taught or programmed to believe, especially around relationships. North Node Taurus, ruled by Venus. We have to show up for relationships in an entirely new way. The old way isn't working anymore. We have to show up to our finances in an entirely new way. The old way isn't working anymore. So when I say you can feel him coming, I know that most of you are tuned into this on some kind of psychic level because you all are tuned into astrology, meaning you are connected to these subtle energies. I know you all can feel that this year is requiring you, and this probably comes with a little bit of a stomach dropping feeling of, holy shit, I got to try the thing that I've never tried. I got to do something totally different. I got to break free of this, this dragon, this South Node Scorpio. So we're not quite there yet, but he's getting closer. So between now and August, just know you're going to be given more options. Your perception is going to change from what it feels like right now. Okay. So back to the full moon in Libra, 
big themes around relationships, big themes around authenticity and being bold enough to step into that beautiful Aries energy of like, this is who I am. These are my boundaries. This is the person I'm becoming, uh, which is probably rapidly shifting at this time. Um, And these relationships, whatever is coming up in the field is just a mirror. It's a beautiful reflection, even when things are challenging, that is showing you a new stage of your growth and a new opportunity to show up as a new version of yourself. All right. I feel like that just about covers it. Uh, Thank you guys so much for tuning in. If you've enjoyed this video, please do give it a like and a share. I really appreciate it. I am putting my information up on the screen. However, like I said last video, my books are currently closed. I'm catching up a little bit. If you would like to get on a wait list, that is an option. I only have about 10 people on it right now, and I'm going to be shooting out an email to everybody on the wait list when I do open my books again, so you can get kind of like a first come, first serve vibe with that if you're interested. Um, Other than that, yeah, I'm just wishing you guys a good full moon in Libra. It's a big one. And hopefully I'll be coming on here live soon. I've, I've missed doing that. All right, everyone, have a beautiful full moon in Libra, and I will talk to you soon. Bye for now.